Hello and good afternoon friends welcome to the CC Educet live lecture dear friends in this session today we would be discussing on an introduction to internet so we would be getting the detailed information what internet is and for this discussion we have once again with us in our studios Dr. D.K. Lobial. Dr. D.K. Lobial is a professor in school of computer system and uh, sciences and uh, dear friends we would like to tell you all that uh, Dr. Lobial has delivered the ample of lectures through Educet uh, live delivery and we believe that all the lectures delivered by him are very very beneficial to, to you. So taking our uh, lecture forward let us welcome our guest Dr. D. Kilobial once again. Hello sir welcome to this lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have studied uh, various layers and we studied the network layer what are its functions and what are the different protocols that can work in network layer and in addition we also talked about the TCP IP is the main protocol suit which is used in the internet today. If you surf something on the internet or you search some information from the internet, you are using in general TCP IP protocol. Now what is said is the layer internet layer in case of TCP IP protocol has an IP protocol and that is the key how the internet works. So now today we will take little introduction of internet, what internet is, how it works and what are the main protocols used in the internet to make it functional. That is what the focus of the today's lecture is. Now the moment you say internet and keep one thing in mind, when I write internet I write with the capital I. And now why I am writing this I will tell you the largest network of networks in the world we call it internet and the moment say internet with capital I. Now it is a vast collection of computer networks you have a network in your organization somebody else has network at his or her organization and in the worldwide there are different companies educational institutions and other organizations they have their own networks. If you connect them together to share various kinds of information then it becomes a network of networks. We probably will call internet. Now the moment I say internet I may start with capital I or small i right I N T E R N E T capital I small i. The moment I say small i capital I the small i means it may be interconnection of any networks. If I make one network in my organization and you make and if you connect these two it becomes also an internet because it is internet networking and that is where the second term comes. The term internet is short for internet networking, interconnection of networks with different network access mechanism addressing different routing techniques etc. Now I have a LAN or a local area network or a small network segment in my organization and there may be another nearby or neighboring institution they may have their own network inside running inside their organization. If you plan to connect them together so that you can share information it also becomes an internet working because two networks are connected together. So that means this is also an internet so I will write with capital I small i then any two or more than two computer networks connected together becomes an internet that is small i. The moment I write capital I, I refer to the internet which we use today that means all networks all around the world which has been combined or connected together to share information that is internet with capital I. So you can share messages all across how far distant you may be from the source that is what the basic rule of internet is. So that means what an internet is a collection of communication networks interconnected by layer 3 switches and routers. And if you remember when you talk of network layer or internal layer that is what the layer 3 is we have a physical layer then we have a data link layer then we have a network layer or internal layer in case of uh, TCP IP. This layer 3 where we use switches or routers for transferring information from one network or a data or a message from one network to another network. That is what it means and therefore 
The internet we use today, it is using TCP IP. Therefore, the IP that is called internet protocol is the key which does the task of carrying a message from one network to the other network. So, most widely used internet networking protocol that means this IP protocol or internet protocol is responsible for carrying the messages from one network to another network and this is foundation it laid foundation for all kind of internet applications. So, therefore, this IP provides a connectionless datagram service that is what we talked. What does it mean? It means each packet is treated separately that means when a packet is being delivered from one network to another network it may follow any path any route that means the packets of same message if you have a message of 1 megabyte and you are sending packets of say for example 2 3 kilobytes then we have n number of packets so the packets belonging to the same message may not follow the same route any route it founds free it may travel through that that is what it treats each packet separately but when they arrive at the destination they have to be assembled together and together in a order so the message makes a sense to the reader at the receiving end so the network layer protocol common to all routers this ip will be running all across the world on all the routers and that is why it becomes an internet protocol that means across the globe all the routers which are connected together and connecting different local area networks use internet protocol for transferring messages from one network to the other network. Why this connectionless net internet working? Why not it is connection oriented? Now, the reason is the advantage is it is flexible and robust. The meaning hereby in case of congestion or a node failure, a packet may find another easier connection oriented service or another path. That is what one of the advantage and there is no unnecessary overheads involved in setting up of a connection because in case of connection oriented you also result into overheads of establishing a connection and then closing a connection that also consumes time. So, if you look at that way the overall time from connection establishment, connection establishment to transfer of message till you close the connection is a total time taken to transfer a message that is called end to end delay that is what we talked earlier. So, that is too much if it is connectionless we do not spend time in establishing connection we do not spend time in closing a connection that means you immediately start sending a message it goes there that is the total time taken to deliver a packet from one end to another end. So, it results into no unnecessary overheads for connection setup and can work with different types of the network types it may be IP based it may be some other network it can work with sorry it can work with different lens it may be ethernet based it may be something else and that means and that at the same time it has certain disadvantages as well and the disadvantage is that it does not guarantee whether your message has been delivered to the destination or not there is no guarantee like if you deliver a postal letter you go and put in the letter box you never know whether that has been reached or has been delivered to the address or not because you put in the letter box the rest of the job is done by the post office that is called a datagram there is no connection or connection established but you make a telephone it guaranteed that the telephone connection is established then you start talking similarly and therefore it doesn't guarantee the order delivery that means all packets to a message as I said may not arrive in the order therefore they have to be put in the order. So, it does not guarantee order of delivery and that is why the different packets can take different paths. So, but what happens if you have to make it a connection oriented I need that the packet is delivered with guarantee and then should be delivered on a in order. So, what to do that means you make a connection and then only that logical path will be followed 
and the packets will be put in the order, everything will happen. So if I need that kind of service, so what do I do? Over above this IP protocol, as I said in TCP IP, either TCP or UDP may be running. So you run TCP over IP because TCP will establish a connection and then start sending packets. So TCP will take care of a connection oriented service where packets will be delivered in the order and it will guarantee that the packets are delivered because in TCP we have acknowledgement procedure as well. So that is how IP is made connectionless to make a fast and best effort delivery. So it will make its best effort to deliver the message to the destination. So how does really internet work? As I said, the IP protocol is the key for functioning and working of an internet. So therefore, in this diagram, what you see, there is an IP protocol, which is the key. That means, if two networks are connected, they will be connected through some router or some switch. And this switch will recognize both the networks by their IP addresses. And IP protocol will recognize the IP address. Now, but at the same time, if you look at the lower layers, each of the machine has its own physical address or hardware address which call MAC address that is what we talked in previous few lectures, medium access control address that is the hardware address. That means at the data link layer as I said in previous lectures, two machines or two desktops or two laptops in a local area network will communicate through their hardware address. That means the source, this laptop which is in front of me, if I want to communicate to some other laptop or desktop kept all around here in this room, if it has to send a message to the other, other desktop machine in this room, they may be part of the same network and LAN, then this machine must know the hardware address or the physical address or the MAC address of the machine on which I want to transmit data here. Now, and but if you look at the user, user knows only the or the machine only knows the IP address of the other desktop machine on which I want to send the message. So, but ultimate communication at the lowest layer will happen or the data link layer will happen in terms of the hardware address. So that means we must try to make a mapping between the hardware address and the IP address of this machine and that is how we use some protocol like ARP that is address resolution protocol we will talk a little later and then reverse ARP there are two protocols which will work at the data at the lower level but they are part of the internet. Now one by one we go and that is how the whole internet will work but at the same time when you access internet and we access internet through a web address we say www dot something dot something that means for a user it is much easier to remember the web address or what you call local uh, url right a universal resource locator that is http you write and then www so on it is easier to recall if i say you to remember an IP address, it will not be possible for you to remember the IP address of any machine here or you cannot remember the, the MAC address or the hardware address of the machine. So therefore, what do you know? You know only the web address or the URL. So the URL has to be converted into IP address and the IP address has to be converted into hardware address because at the lowest level, the ultimate communication between two machines is taking place in, term of the, in terms of the hardware address. Now, so therefore, the IP address in a LAN makes internet protocol to work. Now, this IP address is a 32 bit address. That means the number of bits to represent an IP address is 32. And applications only deal with IP address. That means if you are running an application like email on your machine, so this email on your machine knows the IP address of your machine and it may be knowing the IP address of the server, email server or if you are searching something on Google, your machine must know the IP address of the Google server or Yahoo server if you are connecting with that and that will be a 32 bit address. So the, any application which is running must know the IP address of the machine whereas the user, you may not be knowing 
the IP address of the Google server. You only know google.com, www.google.com or http colon then slash slash. So, that URL address you uh, recall or you remember and similarly you know yahoo.co.in or yahoo.com and this yahoo.com or yahoo.co.in has to be converted into the IP address of the yahoo server and similarly the google.com has to be converted into the IP address of the google server and ultimately these IP addresses at the end in a local AI network will be converted into a physical or a MAC address. That is what the whole philosophy of the working of an internet as far as the technicalities are concerned. But all internet devices are connected to a physical link or hardware network interface card. Two devices, if you remember from the beginning, two devices can only communicate if they have a network interface card. So, if you look at lowest layer, layer level, we said it is an NIC to NIC communication. That means a network interface card is communicating with another network interface card. And that interface card has an hardware address. That is what we call MAC address sometimes. So, the data link protocols, whether you have Ethernet, Token Ring, Token Bus, FDDI, have different addressing mechanism. Now, if you look at this IP addresses, IP addresses provide information on how to locate something or what route it should take. That means, if I have to locate information on the Google, I must use the IP address of the Google server. So, it will try to locate where the Google server is, we do not know where the server is. And if you, where the Yahoo server is located, only if you use the IP address through my routers or routes, it will try to locate where this server resides or is located at. And then, these internet addresses, 32 bit address, contains a root portion and a network part. That means, that root portion the moment I am saying, it contains a network address and or, or the root portion which is called a network address or the host part. That means, in a network, multiple hosts are connected. So, that is how we have to look at it, the name portion known as a host part. That means, if this laptop will have an IP address, it will have two parts. One is the actual host, this is a host, this laptop is a host, its address and other portion is the network because all machines in this room, they will have a same, are connected to one network, will have a network address which has a common network portion and each machine will have a different host portion. That means, the host portion on this laptop is different than the host portion of a desktop put in this room, but the network portion or the root portion of this IP address of this laptop and the other desktops in this room if are, will be the same because they are part of the same network. So, that, that means given an IP address, look at this before we understand that. It is a 32 bit unsigned integer, the sign does not matter. If it is a 32 bit, that means the possible values will be from 0 to 4, 2, 9, 4, 9, 6, 7 and 2, 9, 5. It is a big range. Typically, now the uh, writing style of this IP address is a dotted quad octets. That means there are 4 quad octets, 8 bit numbers. So, if you have 4 8 bit values, out of 30, 32, that is 8, first 8, then second 8, then third 8, then fourth 8, and then the fourth 8. So, we have 4 octets and 8 will be separated by a dot. Like see, it said 2 and a 2 is the is first 8 bit, then dot, then 12, the second 8 bit, then dot, then 28, other 8 bit, then the last 8 bits are value is 129, that is dot. So, these 4 octets are separated by dots, that is how the IP address is written. And if you look at the lowest, what you find is the 202 in binary is uh, represented at 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1 and 1, 0. And then next 8 bit, then next 8 bit, the next 8 bit. That is the value of each 8 bit 202, then 12, then 28, then 129. And this is how the IP address is written. Now, if you look at these 4 octets, as I said, it has 2 portions, one is 
I say it is a network address, other portion is the host address. Now assume this 202.12.28.129 is IP address of the laptop which I am using here, if you assume that. And that means it consists of two portions, as I said, network address and host address. If I assume that 129 is the host, host address, that is 129 is the address of this laptop and therefore the 202.12.28 becomes the network address. So now if I look at the desktop in this room which is part of the same network, so that will have address 202.12.28 common, but this is 129 that will be 130. So the host portion is changing whereas the network portion is same. So looking at this address of another machine, a machine can determine whether the IP address of a machine is belonging to the same network which this host is or it is of different. That is how these two portions are. So that is how it is. The address are partitioned two parts like here. The first 8 bits if I say network part and the, the other 3 octets if I say host part, then what will you see? Now that is how the addressing is done. The original addressing plan too limited. That means what it is? I said the first 8 bits that is first octet in network part and the second is host part that is remaining 24 bits. So if the network part is only 8 bits, how many network you can have possible network is 2 raised to power 8 that is 256 networks total. Whereas if I say there are remaining 24 bits are host address that means in a network you can have 2 raised to power 24 host. That means if I make a network here in this room, if I put this address that the first, first part is the net 8 bit in the network, then I can have 8, 2 raised to power 8 different networks, 250 networks and each network will have 2 raised to power 24 different hosts. All right? That means a single network can have a large number of machines connected to it. But that means before I explain that, look at this and based on that what you can say is that if I say that the network part is only first 8 bit and the remaining 24 bits are host part, then I can have a small number of networks that is 256 networks and number of hosts on a network are too large that is 224. If I assume that, no, no, first 2 octets that is 16 bit is network portion and remaining 16 bit is host portion, then I can have 2 raised to power 16 networks and each network can have 2 raised to power 16 host. Then third is I can say no, the first 24 bit is the, is the network and remaining 8 bits are the host. That means I can have too many networks, right? I can have 2 raised to the power 24 networks, different networks and each network can have 2 raised to the power 8 host, 256 host maximum. So that means I can have larger number of networks and each network can have only small number of host, 256. And that is the way, what is the problem with that? So these are different and based on that what it says, we divided these addresses in different types. So the moment we say the first 8 bits are network address, rest is host, that is called class A addresses. And, and this is identified with the first bit, significant, most significant bit is 0. That means it is class A address. Class A address means it will have 8 bits for network and remaining 24 bits for host. If I say 10 bit, first sig most significant two bits are 10, that means this is class B address and that is first 16 bits are network address and second portion, the 16 bits are host address. That means each network will have 2 raised to power 16 host. Th that is called class B. Then if I say 110, that is and that means first three octets that is 24 bits are network address only the last 8 bits are host address that is called class C address and you will see that means it will begin from uh, 224 to 192 uh, to 223 and then if it is all four ones 1 that is class A which is a reserved address as well as used for multicast address. So now sorry class D 
one one zero that is called multi class address. If all ports are one, that is called E class E, which is a reserved address. That is how we classify now. But the problem is, class A is a too big an address. Then we'll have millions of hosts and uh, uh, sorry, uh, small number of networks and millions of hosts. Class B will have large and class C is too a small number of hosts but many and therefore it should be flexible and you find that in a network we have only small number of network hosts. <laughs>
whereas the IP address is changeable. Why? Because if I am using this machine on a network, on the network of this organization, it will use the IP address of this organization. Say, if I assume the IP address of this organization is 198.12 dot something like that. So, that means what will happen? I have to put that address in this laptop and then only I can use it here to connect with the internet. Now, if I take this laptop to some other organization and I have to connect it to the internet there, so that I can use internet, then I have to reconfigure it. That means, I have to put the IP address of that organization, then only it will work. So, that means, the IP address is, is changeable, portable. I can use it here and use I have other IP address, still I can use this machine. So, it is, I cannot port it there, so unportable, right. So, attach IP address which is attached to the device change when you move from one network to another network, you have to change it, whereas the hardware address will remain the same. Now, look at this diagram. What you see here is like we have 3, 4 desktops and if I said that the IP address of the top most is 138.196.7.78 and the MAC address I have written 1a hyphen 2f dot bb dot 76 dot 09 dot ad. And similarly, for another machine, I have written the numbers. I have four desktops here. They are part of same local area network. The blue shape, it shows that they are part of the same land connected together, maybe by either UTP cable through a switch or a hub, or maybe through BNC connectors using your uh, uh, coaxial cables, but each machine has an IP address and if you look at the IP address, the first three octets 138.196.7 are common to all, whereas the topmost has a last one 78, then 23 on the left side, then at the bottom it is 88, at the right most it is 14. That means, the host portion is different the network portion is common to all four machines 138.196.7, three octets are common. That means, this means these four machines or the computers desktops belong to the same local data network, same network. Their MAC addresses are different. Now, therefore, how do I know? If I do not know, if I access a service, the moment I start I open an internet explorer or a browser and then put a new URL how this IP address is resolved. From the URL, you try to resolve the IP address by looking in a database which is called a DNS database and the IP address and the machine's URL are stored there and it is resolved from there. But we assume therefore, we assume that the IP addresses are known. But how do you find the hardware address? If it is not known, there is no database. So, that means if I say the topmost machine on this is, is communicating with the bottom one, and you assume that they know IP address of each other, but they do not know the MAC address or the physical address. So, they have to ultimately know each other's physical address, because the ultimate communication at the lowest level will take, be taking place as I am repeating it through this MAC addresses, because the, it is NIC to NIC communication. Now, how to find this hardware address, right? Now, here you look at this hardware address, what we are saying is then use a dynamic binding process. That means, I cannot make a database where I say okay, this is the IP address of this machine and its MAC address is this, therefore, you can look in that database. That is not happening. The reason I will talk about. So, every time we have to resolve this address dynamically. Now, therefore, we use an address resolution protocol which we call ARP. Now, so it is a standard for dynamically finding or resolving the addresses in the internet. And second is, that means what it does? It performs a translation between 32 bit address IP address and at a link layer address that is hardware address. It will always translate between these two, right. And that is why I said IP addresses and the link layer addresses and to reach the physical location of a device on the same single network. As I said, in this room, 
all the all the desktops and laptops are connected to a same network. That means all the devices have same IP address prefix. And the physical address is, is burned into the NIC ROM. That means the manufacturer when they buy these hardware addresses and when they make their network interface card, it has to be stored in the ROM of the network interface card so that it cannot be deleted further. It remains forever then. And this address, if you look at Ethernet and this MAC address is a 48 bit address. And the moment I write 1A hyphen 2F hyphen BB hyphen 76 hyphen 09 hyphen AD, they are all hexadecimal numbers. So, hexadecimal that is 16 bit, and I have written this 4 4, right? So, 1A 2F BB, and then 7 9, and that is 6 octets. 6, right? 8, 8, 8, there are 6 octets. And 1A means first 4 bits, A is next 4 bits, this is 1 octet 8 bits, 2F is 8 bit, BB is another 8 bit, 76 is another 8 bit, 09 is another, so and so forth. So, they are, what is the advantage of this? Now, one advantage is because ultimately two devices are communicating by using the physical addresses, which may be difficult for us to remember. So, therefore, to keep the hardware address isolated and without the application is not supposed to know this hardware address, to keep it free from keeping the track of the hardware address, we use IP address and then try to resolve this address. How this address uh, resolution protocol work? Now, assume that a device A wants to find the hardware address of device B. That means, this laptop is say is a, is a device A, there is another desktop machine kept in this room which is called device B and this laptop A has to communicate with that device B and this laptop knows its own, own hardware address, but it does not know the hardware address of the B machine which is the desktop in this room. But we assume that this laptop which I am using knows the IP address of the desktop which you call B, machine B. So, the IP address is known to this laptop, but it does not know the hardware address of that desktop. But the ultimate communication has to take place between two hardware addresses. So how does it know that? It knows the IP address of that machine B, but it does not know the hardware address. That means, before it starts communication, it must know the hardware address of the machine B through its IP address and then it can only communicate. So, that means what? The broadcast query and obtain in a class response. That means, this machine will broadcast the IP address to all the machines in this room. Everybody will receive and the machine only whose IP address it is looking for will resolve it and send its own hardware address. So, the query, it sends a query that the hardware broadcast, link layer broadcast, that is a data link layer broadcast a message that yes, this is my IP address, this is my hardware address, I want to know the hardware addresses, so and so IP address. So, all machines will be broadcast means all machines in this network will receive and the machine whose IP address it is trying to resolve that will also know. Therefore, only that machine, this is the query. So, that is a limited broadcast. I am saying only in a network where all machines have the common network address, only those machines will receive. It cannot be propagated or broadcast outside that network, then it will become a communication between two different network. And then <coughs> that is a limited broadcast in a LAN. So, what does the query contains? When it sends, it will, it will send its own IP address, own hardware address as well as the IP address of the destination machine whose hardware address it wants to resolve. And that machine will send a response, that is not broadcast, it will send a unicast response. That means, it knows the hardware address of itself and IP and the, the sender's IP as well as hardware address. So, it, it will do the unicast. How does it do now? Look at this, that A wants to send a datagram to B, we are talking of a datagram. So, A starts with 
B IP address and A nodes B is on the local area network on this local area network and that can be resolved by using a network prefix, prefix. that means all these nodes or machines which are connected on this network will have the same network portion address. So, they know that we belong to the same network. So, it broadcast as I said ARP query packet containing B's IP address and what does it do now? And then as I said the B will receive other machines will also receive and then they will make a ARP packet and after recognizing IP address it will send a reply with the hardware now. So, when it is sending now I said F F destination address in the Ethernet frame is F F F F all 8 F's that means I do not know the hardware address of the destination therefore, all 6 octets that is 48 bits I will put F F that means all uh, anything F F F F F so that the address is not known and it notes the hardware address of the source then it will send and the query will come. Now, this is how the ARP protocol work. That means, if you look at ARP and we have already talked about our Ethernet box, Ethernet frame contains destination address of the machine to which it is sending a message. This will be hardware address as I is this laptop is transmitting some packet to the other machine at the data link layer, it will make an Ethernet frame in that it will contain the destination hardware address of that machine and source address that is its own IP address and sorry Ethernet address. Then it contains the APR request or ARP reply on this and then sends it. And this ARP packet format it contains that the hardware type that means you are using Ethernet, you are using token ring and what you are using and the protocol, protocol type also. Which protocol you are using? You are using ARP, ARP and so on and so forth. Then it contains the hardware address length because for an Ethernet we have a 6 octet or 6 byte hardware address, but not for all kind of network we will have a 6 byte hardware length this may vary. So, therefore, it will contain what is the length of the hardware address then what is the length of the protocol address that means we do not assume that all network will use internet protocol or IP address some other networks may use another addressing mechanism right. If you look at the normal network it does not use IP address it is its own addressing mechanism its address is 6 byte long, but IP address is only 32 bit. So, rather than using TCP IP I may be using normal network. So, therefore, the protocol type is different it is not IP it is normal network and its address length will be different it is 6 octets not 4 octets. And then what kind of operation code whether it is what kind of operation it want to do sending an address resolving or ARP what kind of. And then it contains the hardware address of the sender, the source protocol is the IP address of the sender. Then it has to know the hardware address of the target machine then it will put target address hardware address F F F F if it is using Ethernet unknown. And we are assuming that it knows the IP address of the target machine though therefore, it will put IP address of the target machine. And then this packet is transmitted as an Ethernet packet to the destination machine a broadcast basically broadcast means all machines on this network will receive it you do not know the hardware address therefore, you broadcast it. And then ultimately as you said when you broadcast all machines on this network will receive it and they will try to say that the target protocol address that is IP address is matching with all those who are receiving will try to see whether this target protocol address is my address or not. And this will be address of only one machine on, on the network the rest will discard it. So, to which machines IP address? this target protocol address will match will fill it up again with the reply that it will send its hardware address its protocol address and that means it will reverse now the source and destinations will reverse the receiving machine will become a source and the sender will become a receiver. So, it goes vice versa it will fill up its hardware address 
and send it back to the source. Then that is why I said the hardware address is not only Ethernet all the time, it is an arbitrary hardware address, therefore the length is important. So is the protocol and then the variable length address field because the, the uh, hardware address may vary because for Ethernet it may be 48 as I said for every day it may be different. Now how this translation takes place? If you look at this, on a network on the left hand side you said organ broadcast an ARP request to all stations on this network. That means on the left hand side if you look at there is a machine whose address whose IP address is 128.143.137.144 and its hardware address is 00 colon A0 colon 24 colon 71 colon E4 colon 44. And if you look at the right most one that is the router and the IP address of this router is 128.143.137.1 and its MAC address is 00 colon E0 colon F9 colon 23 colon A8 colon 20. Now in addition to this there are other and the below this horizontal line there are three more machines they may have similarly some IP address and some hardware address. So when this organ machine wants to resolve an ARP, what it does is it is sending an ARP request in pink color you see. It says that what is the MAC address of this router because it is sending the IP address of the MAC router which is 128 in the, in the pink you look 128.143.137.1 it is sending that it will be received by all, all these the three lower ones plus at this router. But the three lower one machines will not respond because the 128.143.137.1 is not their IP address, it is IP address of this router. So only this router will respond to, how does it respond? The ARP reply now is that the router 137 will make an ARP response, it will say that okay my hardware address is 00 colon E0 colon F9 colon 23 colon A8 colon 20 and then it responds with that if you look at the reply it says MAC address of this router is written there in the pink as well as the hardware and as well as the IP address of this router is written here and it is being transmitted to the Argon machine on this. Therefore, the, it resolves the, the MAC address to an IP address and sent the response back to the original sender and this is how an IP address is resolved to an hardware address and then each machine will start communicating. Now that is not sufficient if you find out you send an ARP request you receive an ARP reply that means every machine if you assume that in a network or a LAN each machine resolves the IP address and the hardware address of each machine that is good enough but that is not sufficient. Why? Because this maintaining this is equally important. So they will maintain every machine will maintain a table it will have a cache in its cache memory cache memory it will contain the IP address and the MAC address mapping of all the machines in a local network they have resolved IP address and the MAC address of all machines and then resolve and puts it out on cache. Whenever it has to send a message it knows the IP address and it will look in its own cache memory and see okay for this IP address I have already resolved the MAC address this is the MAC address and use that MAC address and send a message. So the device cache IP to hardware address pair in a table until information how long this information will be contained after resolved because after certain period of time it may become old and then the timeout will take place. Now when does it becomes old? is now maybe after 30 seconds they will again try to refresh. Then if A, ARP to B and B keeps age information this will probably send a packet to A soon that means it has resolved the address and send a packet. If age ARP sends ARP to B and keeps B information A will probably send more packets to B but other machine do not keep age. So during this communication 
keep one thing in mind. If two machines are communicating, an entire internet works, if you are using ethernet, it works in a broadcast mode. So, it sends broadcast a message and the target machine receives, the other machines are also receiving the packets. They will not do anything, but they will know the addresses. So, therefore, even if machine A and B are communicating, because it is containing the IP address of A and the MAC address of A, it is containing the MAC address of B and containing the IP address of B. When it did broadcast this packet, machine C and D, which are also connected to the same network, will receive this because it is being broadcasted. So, then machine C and D will come to know the IP address as well as the MAC address of machine A. They will also come to know about the IP address and MAC address of machine B because these are contained in a frame which A transmitted broadcast to B but received by C and D because it is a broadcast. And therefore, B and C will come to know about the both the addresses of A and B, MAC and IP. So, B and C in its own cache memory will contain this information in the table. So, whenever C has to send a message to A, it does not need to resolve this addresses because it will look into the cache memory and it will see the address of A, MAC address of A is already kept there. So, it will use that. So, it is not in a network every time that each machine will keep on resolving the addresses, but initially they have to resolve. Gradually by looking at the messages transmitted by different machines, the other machines in the network will come to know about the MAC address as well as the IP address of other machines and will maintain table in their own case. So, this process keeps on going. But information may become old. Now, the moment I say information may become old, it has like see this table contains this may be a case of a machine, it will contain the IP address as well as its corresponding MAC address. So, anytime it has to send, it will resolve it right. Now, but one of the important point which I will try to talk here is why this in information becomes old is important. This information becomes old because the IP addresses which a machine is using it may change. What does it mean? As I said the internet addresses are for byte long 32 bit. If I my organization buys class C address that is say first three bytes are network address and last two bytes are one byte is a host address. That means, I can have maximum 256 host 256 machines and even if you take 0 and 256, I will have only 54 not sorry 254. Two are one is for broadcast, one is for local. So, I will have only 254. Now, a bigger organization 254 may be a small number. If I am using 500 machines then what do I do? Because if I give each machine one IP address, I will be able to assign IP addresses to only 254 machines. What about the remaining machines out of 500? I know that all the 500 machines are not used simultaneously. Probably I assume that out of 500 only 200s are used, but I cannot give address. So, the IP addresses are allocated dynamically. The moment I say dynamically, that means, I use a private address which will be mapped to a public address like 202. I can use more number of private addresses which we will talk in the next lecture, but at the same time what I am trying to say is because since the addresses are dynamically allocated, the IP addresses are dynamically allocated, therefore, they may change and if you have resolved once and kept the mapping in your own case, it may be older because the IP address of a machine have has by now changed because they are dynamically configured. So, because of this dynamic configuration of IP addresses, they keep on changing. Though they may remain for a longer period of time, but still there is a change in the IP address, therefore, the mapping becomes invalid after a certain period of time. Therefore, they have to be refreshed. The cache has to be refreshed and that is how the binding becomes important and refreshing becomes important. Now, finally, 
because what happens if an ARP request is made for a non-existent host? You give an IP address and try to resolve the host does not exist. And then you again try to resolve because this fails and eventually you will give up because this is not being resolved. What if a host sends an ARP request for its own IP address, knows as graduation ARP, no response hopefully will come and it has to drop the packet after some time. So therefore, what we said in total today is that the address resolution of IP to hardware address is very important. If a machine has to communicate and then the IP address is the key protocol or IP protocol is the key protocol to communicate to make internet possible and therefore the IP addressing is important and therefore the mapping is, is important and the user is kept away from the burden of remembering these numbers. I cannot remember these numbers whether it is 4 byte, 4 octet of hardware address or sorry 6 octet of hardware address or 4 octet number of IP address is difficult to ultimately will uh, remember the names like it in English like addresses www and then the resolution address resolving this URL to IP then IP to hardware address is the task of the network ultimately to address resolution becomes an important protocol. Thank you. Thank you very much. With this note, thank you, sir. Thank you so very much for giving us a very, very productive session. And uh, dear friends, uh, we would be like uh, uploading this lecture very soon on uh, YouTube. So, after watching the left, uh, uh, after watching the lecture, if you feel so that uh, you want to write something to us, do write to us at info.cc at the rate and We would meeting again soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Thank you once again. Thank you.